بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome everyone to our uh, family program for the month of January 2024. Uh, inshallah, the, to the topic or the title of today's lecture is uh, the blessings of winter. Before we start the program, inshallah, we're going to have some recitation. Uh, so we're going to call on Brother Aaron. Aaron is going to recite some verses for us, inshallah. Then afterwards, Brother Samir will uh, do a translation. بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودأك ربك وما خلا وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك آئلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنئمة ربك فحدث Sakbir 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 Assalamu alaikum Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Wal duha by the morning brightness wal layli idha saja by the night when it covers with darkness ma wada'a rabbuka wa ma khala your Lord has not taken leave of you, nor has he detested you. And the hereafter is better for you than the first life. And your Lord is going to give you, and you will be satisfied. And did he not? Find you an orphan and give you refuge. And had he found you lost and guided you. And he found you poor and made you self sufficient. So as for the orphan, do not oppress them. And as for the petitioner, do not repel him. But as for the favor of your Lord, report it. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khairan, brother Aaron and brother Samir. These are uh, two of our Majlisa students. Uh, so inshallah we'll move into uh, our lecture for tonight. And this lecture will be delivered by Ustaz uh, Irshad Ibrahim, who is no stranger to uh, Masjid al-Siddiq. He is a uh, khatib teacher uh, here at the Masjid, and we've all seen him multiple times. He studied, uh, he first started his studies uh, formally at the Guyana Islamic Institute, and then he went on to study at the Islamic University of in Medina in the College of Sharia. He's now completing his master's at the Islamic Open University, and he serves as an educator and a khatib at various masjids within the uh, Queens, New York area. So we invite Brother uh, Ustaz uh, Irshad Ibrahim to uh, deliver the lecture, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana li hadha. Wa ma kunna li nahtadi alawla an hadana Allah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta sami'ul alim. 
wa tub alaina innaka anta tawwab rahim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlal uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'd all praises are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we thank him we glorify him we seek his help and aid and we ask allah to forgive us we ask allah to protect us we seek refuge in allah from the evils of our own selves and from the sins that we commit and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his household, his companions, and all those who follow him until Yawm al Qiyamah. May Allah make us among them. Amin. Ya Rabbul Alameen. My dear brothers and sisters, I implore each and every one of you to fear Allah and to use your time beneficially with what will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah and make yourselves from among the people of Jannah. Fear Allah and come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can be from among the inhabitants of paradise. Bi'idhnillah, insha'Allah. So my dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we are in the winter season. And this season typically brings many difficulties and challenges. Uh, it brings many difficulties and challenges. It is cold, and then it brings snow sometimes, can pose a very, uh, you know, very challenging for us to move, uh, to travel. So it complicates many things for us. And on top of that, it can bring, as some people call it, seasonal depression. What is seasonal depression? It is, it, it happens because of the absence of sunlight and then because most of the time you're indoor, you're inside. So it can bring about seasonal depression. But despite the difficulties, despite the challenges we experience in winter, we want to look at some of the benefits, some of the advantages that winter bring to us. Some of the advantages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in this season, specifically for us Muslims who capitalize on every opportunity to earn maximum reward and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah tonight, we would like to highlight some of the blessings of winter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and how we can take advantage of them and can capitalize on them bi'idhnillah. So first of all, winter is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Winter is one of the signs, one of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many signs and you will see in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us many signs to contemplate, to observe, to reflect upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously reminds us to look at these signs and reflect upon them so that these signs can bring us closer to Him. Looking at these signs, contemplate on them, it can increase our iman in Allah azza wa jal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Qul indhuru madha fi samawati wal ard, that observe, look, observe what is in the heavens and the earth. Wa ma tugni al-ayatu wa nudhuru an qawmin la yu'minun. And indeed the signs and warnings are of no benefit to those who have no iman. What this means? It means that if a kafir observe all of these signs and seasons of Allah, it does nothing to him, right? It does nothing to him. So when a Muslim, a mu'min look at uh, and observe these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it strengthens their iman. It, they become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their iman becomes Former, stronger, their conviction in their iman becomes stronger. So it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
for us to look around and observe the skies. Observe what happens there. Look at the skies. There is no pillar holding it up. These are signs from Allah. Then Allah commands us, look at the earth. Look at the earth and observe what happens there. Observe what happens inside, what happens on it, what happens around it. But there is a condition, and as we mentioned, that condition is Iman. Condition is Iman for that to happen. We must have Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, if you are a person who has Iman, you have to look at these signs of Allah azza wa jal, and you have to take lessons from them. You have to look and observe these signs of Allah and you have to learn from them. And even though the signs are numerous, we have to pay attention to them. As Muslims, we have to pay attention to them. But a lot of people, they don't do that. And winter, my brothers and sisters, we can think of it as a sign from among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it bring to us? What does it teach us? One of the things that it teaches us, the very first thing it teaches us, about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has control over everything. The first sign is that who is in charge? Allah azza wa jal. He wants it to be hot, it is hot. We have summer. He wants it to be cold, it is cold. He wants it to, to, to be snowing, it is snowing. He wants to give us rain, we have rain. Can anyone prevent it? No. No one can prevent it. So it tells us about the, the, the power, the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he has the control over everything. Uh, he brings life to the plants and they live. He brings life to humanity and they live. And then he brings death to them and they die. And no one has power, no matter how advanced we are, no matter how advanced we think we are, no matter how advanced we will be, we, no one can match the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is demonstrated clearly. Not Mother Nature, no. The Kufar, when there is a blizzard, they say Mother Nature is not nice to us. It's not Mother Nature. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fail to recognize Allah azza wa jal. They say it's Mother Nature. So it's not Mother Nature. There's nothing like Mother Nature. My brothers and sisters, it is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, we must ponder and reflect on the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perfect is he has made for people a savior from the heat by giving us the winter. And then he gave us a savior from the cold by giving us the summer. Alhamdulillah. So look at his ability upon his creation. How he is able to change and bring opposites. Heat and cold. And Allah Azza wa Jal has created everything in opposites. Thus showing the power and the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created the night and the day. He created sickness and health. He created life and death. He created male and female. He created the sun and the moon. And the examples in opposites go on and on and on. And even if humanity and some of us humans, we think today because we have made many inventions, we invented a lot of things, or what we have discovered that we can come close to the power of Allah, this resembles, this really resembles the conversation that Ibrahim salam had with Nimrud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about this. Because Ibrahim alayhi salam said to Nimrud, Rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumit, that my Lord, he gives life and death. What Nimrud said? Nimrud said, Ana wa umit. I give life and I, I, I give death. 
I kill someone and I can save his, another person's life. I can do that. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Qala fa inna Allah ya'ti bi shamsin min al-mashriq That my Rabb, my Allah, Allah azza wa jal, my Lord, he brings the sun from the east. Fa'ti biha min al-maghrib. Fabuhita alladhi kafar. So you bring it. So Ibrahim alayhi salam tells him, you bring it from the west. And he discovered his weakness and he was dumbfounded. He was astonished. So my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful and all merciful. So in winter we see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over humanity. And we also witness the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over humanity. My brothers and sisters, from among the benefits of Allah azza wa jal decreeing upon his slaves the season of winter is the benefit it brings to, to your bodies. Think about it. The summer is a season which expels discharge from your body. You perspire a lot. Right? You perspire, you sweat a lot. Whereas the winter strengthens and restores your body. Subhanallah. We don't, we don't look at it this way. So my brothers and sisters, we also learn that winter reminds us of death. al maut, And of Yawmul Qiyamah. Winter reminds us of death and of Yawmul Qiyamah. The day of judgment, the resurrection, it reminds us of the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, Have they not seen how Allah azza wa jal starts creation and brings it back? Inna dhalika ala yaseer. That indeed this is easy for Allah azza wa jal. So how do we see it? How do we see that Allah starts creation and, and, and brings it back? We have not really seen people dying and come back to life. No. This was, this was a miracle from Isa alayhi salam, with the help of Allah. Uh, he raised the dead. But how do we see this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us, showed us, we haven't really seen humans dying and then resurrected. But what we do see is the plant life around us. Think about it. We see it being born, the plant. We see it being born. Then we see it being mature, reaching maturity. Then we see it dying and then resurrected again, being brought back to life. So we see this every year. And with that, Allah Azza wa Jal proves to us the same way He can resurrect us. After we, we become dead and our bones become rotted, our bones become dust, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us back to life. So we see it by observing the plants. After today, you go back home and you look at the trees. Huh? We can observe it physically proves it to us. So this is a great sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind us of Yawmul Qiyamah. So this should strengthen your Iman when year after year you look at the plant, you look at the trees around your home and you see that they lose all their leaves. Huh? They die and after the, the, in the winter, they die and then they come back to life again after the winter. This is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, winter also teaches us how temporary this life is. How insignificant this life is. Allah azza wa jal gave us a perfect example. He says, Alam, alam tara anna Allah anzala minas samai ma'an fasalakahu yanabi'a fil ard. That do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky and makes it flow as springs and rivers in the earth? 
And then he said, Thumma yukhriju bihi zara'am mukhtalifan alwanu. Then he produces thereby crops of different colors, different vegetables, different fruits, different colors of fruits and vegetables, different taste that you enjoy. Right? Thumma yahiju fatarahu musfarra. Then they dries up and you see them turned yellow. Thumma yaja'aluhu hutama. Then he makes them scattered debris. Huh? You see the leaves dried and they, they fell off and then the wind blew them away. My brothers and sisters. And then Allah says, Inna fi dhalika la dhikra li ulil albab. Indeed. That is a reminder for those of understanding. That's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to reflect upon, for you to contemplate and think about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this example. And this is the example of this life, the life of the dunya, so insignificant that people, brothers, stop talking to brothers because of that. Sisters don't speak to sisters because of that. Huh? Siblings don't talk to each other because of issues of the dunya. And here it's, it is likened to the dried leaves. Allah has full ability over everything. So if you want to see how temporary this life is, if you want to see how temporary this life is and how it will end, just look at the trees around your home. Just look at the trees, how it has withered, how life has taken away from it. And that is an example of how this life is temporary. That it's going to end just like the trees and the plants in winter. And if you want to see what the Yom al Qiyamah looks like, then keep looking at those very trees that they will sprout up again with leaves. The same way Allah Azza wa Jal brings back life to the dead trees, the same way Allah Azza wa Jal will bring back life to dead bones that will be resurrected standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give an account of our, our deeds, our life here. So if, if we have Iman, we cannot have dead hearts. We cannot have hard hearts. We have to look and observe these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is showing us all these signs around us so that we are moved by them. We are moved by them and bring us closer to him so that our iman is, is fortified. My brothers and sisters, winter also brings us many benefits. Some of our righteous predecessors, Salaf al-Salih, they said, Ashita Rabi al mu'min that winter is the springtime of the believer. Winter is the treasure of the believer. Why is that so? Why is that winter is the, is the treasure of the believer? So first of all, winter presents you an opportunity to fast during the days of winter. The days are very short. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this opportunity in winter. The days are very short. It is a time to fast. Time to fast. So good deeds are made easy for us during this season. The days are short and they are cold. So when you're fasting, it's comfortable for you. So a person finds it easier to fast without any real struggle or any difficulty. And the virtues of fasting has, have been narrated in many narrations. The Prophet Sallallahu said, al ghanimatu fil baridah as fi shita That the easy reward is fasting in winter. Why? Because you don't have to do a lot. It is likened to the ghanima, the spoils of war. The spoils of war. That's why the ghanima, the spoils of war, is easy. 
by fasting in the winter. So this is easy blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can collect rewards by fasting in the winter when it's easy to do so. Whether you have fast to make up from, from, from Ramadan, huh? now is the time to make it up. Especially our sisters, now is the time to make up the fast that you missed in Ramadan, winter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. So whether you have to make up fast, this is the time. Also to fast the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the lunar calendar. Ayyamul Bid. This is the time. Also Mondays and Thursdays, the Sunnah fast. This is the time. Winter. This is the time to start training. It is the time to start training, especially Ramadan is just uh, uh, two months away, inshallah. So, my brothers and sisters, among the virtues of fasting, the Prophet wasallam also told us, Man sama yawman fi sabilillah ba'adallahu wajhahu anin nari sab'ina kharifa That whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will distance his face from the hellfire, Sabaina Kharifa, 70 years. This is, this is something that we should capitalize on and, and, and we should go on and do it in this, in this winter. If we haven't started, we still have time. So my brothers and sisters, from among the blessings of winter is an opportunity for Qiyamul Layl. It's an opportunity for Qiyamul Layl. For praying during the night because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in winter the nights are long unlike the summer the nights are short think about it you have time after Salatul Isha you have time to memorize Quran and then you still have time to do your daily recitation of Quran and then you still have time to get a good night's sleep and then you still have time to get up in the last third of the night for Qiyamul Layl before Salatul Fajr. So think about it. The nights are long in winter. So we have to capitalize. We have to capitalize. Here is a blessed opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in this season. So once you pray Salatul Isha, then you have you have time for, for, for dhikr, you have time to even to listen to a lecture, you have time to even to listen to Quran. If you're tired, you, you have time to do so much, not to waste the night away. Allah blessed us with this winter nights, long nights. We shouldn't throw it away, we shouldn't waste it away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers, that they forsake their beds to call out to their Lord in fear and hope and they spend in charity in Allah's cause out of what we have given them. That they used to sleep but little by night invoking their Lord by, and praying with fear and hope. So my brothers and sisters, winter nights, blessed nights for us to capitalize and to do more during the night. And this will, will train us and give us a head start for the rest of the year. That if you start waking up for Qiyamul Layl in the winter, then it is a form of training for the rest of the year. My brothers and sisters, winter reminds us of the hellfire. Subhanallah, you may say, how is it possible? How can winter remind us of hellfire? It may seem strange to us because winter is cold. So you might wonder why this has to do with the hellfire. So this is because the hellfire is able to have blazing heat and bitter cold. So there is a hadith of the Prophet 
that explains how winter reminds us of the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us of a conversation that happened in the hidden world. That if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had not told us, we would not have known. Something that we wouldn't know if he had not told us. Ishtakat in naru ila rabbiha faqalat Ya Rabbi, akala ba'di ba'da That hellfire complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hellfire spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, O oh Allah, some parts of me are eating each other. The heat is so intense that one part is eating the other. فَأَذِنَ لَهَا بِنَفَسَيْنِ نَفَسٍ فِي الشِّتَى وَنَفَسٍ فِي الصَّيْفِ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it permission to breed twice a year. Nafasun fi shita, one breath in winter and one breath in summer. Fahuwa shaddu ma tajiduna min al harf. That that is the most intense heat that you experience in the summer. Fahuwa shaddu ma tajiduna min al zamharir. And that is the most intense cold that you experience in the winter. So when you encounter that intense cold, as we will have inshallah next week, then think about the hellfire. It should remind you of the hellfire, that you don't want to be in the hellfire to experience that. So it should remind you of the hellfire, to distance yourself from the hellfire, to do more good, so that you can earn the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. So my brothers and sisters, if you encounter difficulty performing some acts of ibadah during this time, the winter time, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you according to your difficulty, according to the hardship that you encounter. And we know this, from a principle of the Sharia. And we also understand it from a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, Shall I not tell you of what erase sins and elevates you in levels? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking his companions. Kalu, Bala ya Rasulullah, they said, certainly, O Messenger of Allah, call, he said, is babul wudu ala al makari, that it is completing the wudu despite difficulty and hardship. Wa kathratul khut ila al masajid, and increasing your footsteps or frequent footsteps towards the masjid. Wa tidharu salah ba'da salah. And waiting for the salah after one salah. Fadalikum ur ribat, fadalikum ur ribat. That is the equivalent to waiting for the battle, fisa bilillah. So, my brothers and sisters, completing the wudu, even though it is difficult in the winter, and coming out in the cold, bundling up to go to the masjid. It is an opportunity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to erase your sins by making wudu in the winter when it's cold and coming out cold to the masjid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you based on your hardship. So it means, it's a means of getting rid of your sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an opportunity to get rid of our minor sins. And then, we know that in winter, the time for salah, they comes very fast. The time between salah to dhuhr and asr, uh, asr is very short. The time between asr and maghrib is very short. And then maghrib and isha is very short. So here, you pray one salah, you wait, you sit in the masjid waiting for the other salah. Uh, this is like waiting. It is equivalent to waiting for the battle feast of Bilillah. So my brothers and sisters, winter also present you an opportunity for du'a. Winter presents you an opportunity for du'a.
to make dua, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Thintani ma turaddan, the two things will not be rejected. A dua in the nida wa taht al matar. The two, two things will not be rejected. Dua in the nida, dua at the time of the adhan, and dua when it rains. So dua when it rains. So if you want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you want it to be accepted, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that at these two times, among the times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept dua, these two times it is not rejected. These two times are blessed times when the adhan is being called and when it is raining. Now snow and hail uh, that we experience, whatever we experience during the winter, it is like rain. So when it is actually snowing, rather than complaining, we, our approach should be different. Rather than complaining about the snow, it is a time for dua. It is a time, an opportune time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us for dua. And then you might discover that you like the cold and you really love the winter just because of the opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us to earning rewards and to get rid of our minor sins and, and for our dua to be accepted. My brothers and sisters, also some of us might get sick during the winter, right? We get sick, we get cold, we get fever, all of these things we get. And that is also a blessing. It is also an opportunity for us. It's a blessing in disguise. It's hard, but it's an opportunity to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha that she, uh, she, he said Malaki ya Umm Sulaim that what is, what is with you, what's the matter, what's, what's wrong with you ya Umm Sulaim she was feeling sick and then she said Qalat al-humma la barakallahu fiha she said I have a fever may Allah do not put barakah in it and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tasubbi al humma Do not insult fever. Fa innaha tudhihibu khataya bani adam kama yudhihibu al-kiru khabath al-hadid That he tells her, Do not insult fever, for it removes the sin of the children of Adam as the furnace purifies iron. Subhanallah. So next time you have fever, you have cold, you have a sickness, look at it this way. That it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to get rid of your sins. So the same way iron is being purified from its remnants in the furnace, the same way fever purifies sickness, purifies our sins, purifies you from sins. So when we get sick in the winter, and we are suffering from a cold and fever and discomfort. Remember, rather than complaining about the winter, think about it. Rather than complaining, look at it as an opportunity to remove the minor sins that we all have. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent it for purification. My brothers and sisters, from the righteous deeds that we can do in these virtuous winter days is for us to remember and to ponder and to reflect upon the days that go by. Think about it. How many winters have you spent? How many winters have gone by for you? You spent so many winters. How many winters have you been through in your life? How many days, how many years have passed you by? Your life is lived, your days have passed, and your life is fading away. So therefore, it is upon you to be intelligent, to remember the hereafter, and to prepare for it. 
by doing good deeds and righteous deeds. Increase in good deeds, repent to Allah and seek His forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, That remember, beware, 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 beware and fear the day when you will, you shall be brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then every person shall be paid what he earned and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. Think about this ayah that so many winters have passed us by. Have we capitalized? If we didn't know, we didn't know. Alhamdulillah, we know. Tonight we know. So we have to Capitalize on the days left in winter. So utilize your time wisely in preparation to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, so when you look at all of this, when you look at all of this as a whole package, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends our way, it is the best. So as you encounter winter with fasting, as you encounter winter with fasting, it's days, whatever you can. Praying at night, whatever you can. Giving charity, whatever you can. Reciting Quran, whatever you can. Praying to Allah Azza wa Jal and making dua, whatever you can. These are ways to capitalize on this season rather than complaining about it. So these are the ways that you can capitalize on winter rather than complaining about it. So we capitalize on the opportunity to earn rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get closer to Allah in the process. So when we encounter winter again, when we encounter winter in this way, by, by spending the day in fasting and getting closer to Allah and spending the nights in ibadah and spending, utilize our time efficiently, then it can become Rabi'ul Mu'min, the springtime of the believer, the treasure of the believer. But if we encounter it in other ways, then it will be negative. It will be negative, and we will suffer through it, and we will not benefit from it as a believer. So the opportunity is there for us to make the right choice and capitalize on this winter. And every winter that we experience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with by the help of Allah. So before I close, another thing I want to talk about, and that is about sadaqah. So in the beginning of the talk, we mentioned that winter is very challenging and difficult for people. It's very challenging and difficult because they don't have, some, some people don't have enough jackets, uh, blankets, whatever, to, 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 uh, to, to, to bear the coal. So they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of clothes. They don't have a lot of food. So whether they are in your community or they are refugees around the world, suffering through winter, it is a time. It is a time to spend. So when people are actually in need, when they're actually in need, especially in the winter, it is the time that your charity is valuable. Your sadaqah is valuable. So when it reaches people who are desperate for it, then it is, this is when it is most valuable for you. So it's an opportunity for us to look around us. Look at, around us, start with our family. Look around us, start, uh, then look at your neighbors. Look at your family, look at your friends, look at the, the, the refugees around us and try to help them. Something as simple as shoveling the snow for your neighbor or removing the leaves. Something that may seem so insignificant, but remember on your scale it is heavy. So if you know that you have a neighbor that cannot do it, do it for them. 
Whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, it doesn't matter. You have to help them. Do them that favor and earn reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that would bring you closer to them and bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will bring them, bi idhnillah, by the will of Allah, it will bring them closer to Islam. And even if it doesn't bring them closer to Islam, you will still earn the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if your neighbor needs a ride, or your neighbor needs grocery, make sure you check on them during this winter season and ask them if they need help, need something that you can get for them. So it, it doesn't have to be only Muslims. Uh, it doesn't have to be Muslims, non-Muslims as well. So this is an opportunity for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to earn rewards. All of this are very easy for you. During this winter, it's, it's Rabi'ul Mu'min. It's the springtime of the believer. It's, where, it's the treasure. It's where you, it's the ghanima, where you, where you get good deeds easy. So if you can give money locally or overseas to help in relieving the suffering of people in winter, then do it without even thinking twice. So these are opportunities, my brothers and sisters, to earn the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, I would just like to, to say that I would like to remind us all that Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to reach the beginning of the blessed season with the start of this sacred month of Rajab. Shahrullah, the month of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we pray and remind ourselves to be we pray and remind ourselves to be mindful of our actions during this sacred month, this blessed month of Rajab, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called it his month. Stay away from sins. Stay away from sins and increase in good deeds. Increase in good deeds as sins are punished more, but good deeds are also rewarded more. It's a sacred month. Rajab is one of the sacred months. So you stay away from sins. So let's make extra sincere, consistent dua in our tah tahajjud for our brothers and sisters who are still being severely tested in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also testing us as to how we react and what we do to help them. So remember, Allah is testing them, Allah is testing us as well. What are we doing? Are we just ignoring it? What are we doing? We will be held accountable on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So let's give extra charity towards their cause and to all parts of the world, the Muslims who are suffering in, in, in Gaza, in Sudan, in Bangladesh, in India, wherever they are, in, in Syria, every, in Yemen, Every country that Muslims are suffering, it is our duty as Muslims to help them. So let's give extra charity towards their cause and to, and to all the other parts of the world where Muslims and humanity are suffering. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us abundantly and, give, and forgive us our sins and save us from the hellfire and grant us entrance into Jannatul Firdausul A'la. O oh Allah, put blessings in our Rajab and Sha'ban and allow us to reach Ramadan. O oh Allah, bless us in this winter and every other winter by your help. O oh Allah, help us to see your signs around us and to learn from them and to benefit from them and to teach them and to take lessons from them. O oh Allah, help us to earn the rewards from winter and at the same time, to bless us with the opportunity of winter to get closer to you. O oh Allah, forgive all our sins, the one we know about and the ones we do not know about. O oh Allah, help our Muslim brothers and sisters in all parts of the globe who are facing trials and tribulations. Strengthen their iman and relieve them from hardship and sufferings that they are facing at this time. My brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you for listening. 
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write this towards our good deeds. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Jazakumullah. Very good. Brother asked a question about, uh, uh, we mentioned about helping non-Muslims as well, that not only giving to Muslims, uh, we give to non-Muslims who are in need. If you know, apparently you know that you're going to use the help that you give them to indulge in haram, then you give them something else. Don't give them the money to buy you no know, alcohol and uh, beer or whatever they need it for. No. In this way, you buy, you, you, you give them food. Help them by giving them food. You see many people on the street, they need help. It's our duty to help them. If you know for a fact they will use the money towards haram, well then, give them food instead. Food, clothing, whatever they need, inshallah. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in that surah, let me, uh, let, let me uh, find it so I can uh, share it with everybody, inshallah. So the brother, the brother asked the question about, well, it's not a question, just a, a little addition about uh, this surah, Surah al Quraysh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this surah, he mentioned the, 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 in the shita, was saif, Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, li ila fi Quraysh, ila fihim rihlata shita was saif, fal ya'budu rabba hadha al bayt. الذي أتعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف. That in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying, "Liila fi Quraysh," for the accustomed security of the Quraysh. Ila fihim rihlat al-shita wa al-saif. Their accustomed security in the caravan of winter and summer. Let them worship the Lord of this house. That who has fed them, saving them from hunger and made them safe, saving them from fear. So in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is mentioning the, the, the season of shita was saif. So these were two seasons that the, the Quraysh, they used to, they used to travel to go with their caravan. They go to Sham and they, they, they buy uh, uh, merchandise and they bring it back, right? They, in in, in, the, in, the, in the, these two seasons, they go in one season, they come and they go to another place also during these uh, seasons. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of it that let them worship the Lord of the house. Let them worship Allah, Rabbul Kaaba, 
let them worship the Lord of the house who has given them this make facilitate for them to go out and to get merchandise and food and everything during these uh, seasons and making their life easy for them Allah the one who Allah Azza wa Jal who fed them saving them from hunger and made them safe saving them from fear because this journey entails with the caravan distant so they they are highway robber there are so many different challenges that they face going there coming back so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this surah to them that worship to give up idolatry worship Allah who has provided this this food this this merchandise uh, facilitate it for you make it easy for you to get it and also protect you from from uh, disasters going and coming so we can look up more uh, the tafsir of this surah later uh, when you go back inshallah any other question Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's it's in Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. I'll, I'll forward it to you, inshallah. Mm. Any other questions from this side? No. So the thing is that in Guyana, we only experience hot and cold, right? We experience hot, uh, not cold, I'm sorry. We only experience hot, tropical, yeah? Tropical, rain, rain and, and, and sunshine, tropical. Over here, we learn about the different seasons. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be here to experience the different seasons. So we have to absorb these are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we take benefits from it. Questions over here, Alex, <laughs> Leonard. Zakallah uh, Khairan, Ustaz Rashad, for that presentation on the winter. Inshallah, uh, we will now proceed to dinner. We have dinner uh, available for everyone, ready downstairs. So the brothers will go down to the basement, and the sisters will be uh, eating on the first floor. Inshallah. So everyone is welcome to uh, join in the dinner. Inshallah, Taala. Zakallah Khairan. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.